Good afternoon, Mr. Harvey. Burning, Mar Burning Man is very famous for have a leave no trace policy, meaning there's no garbage. How does Burning Man implement and enforce the idea that there's nothing should be left over after the festival? Well, it, it's, it's owing first to the fact that it's such a profoundly empty place. Yeah. In, 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 you know, in, in most circumstances, in most civilized contexts, garbage just sort of blends in. Not in Switzerland. <laughs> I'm impressed. Uh, it, but it can be lost just in the circumstantial litter of the one's surroundings. But uh, Burning Man is a flat Euclidean plane that's, that's barren of all life and, 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 and it, uh, it's just stunningly blank. So from the very beginning, if someone dropped something on the ground, it leapt to the eye, and, and like an exclamation point. And, uh, and that pointed to the agency of the person who dropped it. <laughs> And uh, so we said it was, uh, it was a leave no trace event and uh, accordingly have provided uh, uh, no public uh, uh, trash receptacles. And, and what people have done since uh, Burning Man is an authentic culture and in any authentic culture people are not so much r ruled by regulations, but, uh, but, but ruled by uh, 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 custom, which means that values have been internalized. So, and, and for those who don't have a very heavy conscience, if, if, if they don't recognize the value involved, their friends will point it out to them. And, uh, and they'll say, you shouldn't do that. We, we don't do that. You know, we, the people, don't do that. And, and that's how a lot of things, it, 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 it's how a lot of order is brought to the world. Uh, uh, and uh, so, uh, having said that, and having not provided any outlet for trash, uh, people felt morally bound to to take care of their own garbage. That's one of the principles, radical self-reliance. And, and it's good for people because they have to contemplate their share of, of, the, uh, of the waste stream, <laughs> and, and which is so incident to you know, consumer culture, especially disposable yeah. culture. And, and uh, uh, so that's an education. It's amazing. Th then people teach themselves how to come and, and not and, and not bring all these packaging because half of what we buy off the shelf is all about the packaging and and so if you strip things of pa uh, then you can solve the problem for yourself there by 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 not having all these 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 ridiculous packages that are no more than placards covered with advertising uh, from you know encumbering your efforts to fulfill that ideal, and and, and largely, and, 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 and many people who come year after year learn how to do that, and um, so voila, here we have a city of sixty thousand people who actually pick up after themselves. If Switzerland can do it, we can do it. Do you think humanity needs to go undergo a paradigm shift to save the world? I, well, our problems are so pervasive. And, and the contradictions that have emerged in this postmodern world in the 21st century are so profound, so profound that they actually paralyze thinking, thought, in many ways, uh, I, I think then we may reach a point where it is felt by many that it, it's time to redefine what is valuable, which, which is a, a very philosophical question. What makes life worth living is the essential question. And, and uh, so that may be, we may, in, in an era of diminishing resources, and class, class conflicts, and disparity of, of social outcomes, you know, uh, 
I, I think that there, there is potential for um, that to happen. Milton Friedman, the very conservative economist, said that change uh, only happens in a, a, a crisis, real or perceived, and I think the ones we're looking at are real. Uh, and then when actions are undertaken, all depend on what ideas are just lying around. And uh, I, I, I think the work to be done now is, is, is to make those ideas as prevalent as, as, as leaves that carpet the forest. So when the time comes, people will look around and, w without any vision of change in sight and pick up a few of those ideas and say, oh, this is just common sense. You know, we, we have to do this. And, and a lot of change comes out of pain. Some change, uh, change can come out of joy. Uh, if we can combine pain and joy, then change could catch on and we could, that paradigm shift you're talking about, which is really just a shift in moral vision, a shift in, 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 in philosophical regard, which usually doesn't count for anything in the world. Uh, but there are moments of great crisis where philosophy is all you've got. It's your best chance. And I think it might occur. I would say, wait about 20 years, and, and, and there'll be more contradictions than ever, and they'll be more painful. And, uh, and then we'll see. It could result, if, those, if the good ideas, the constructive ideas aren't there, then it'll turn into trauma. We've seen that. Europe has seen that twice, in a big way. Nice. And and uh, uh, but it can as easily go the other way if people now uh, uh, spread uh, uh, ideas, especially in the context of of real community and real culture on the hoof in the world that's that's organizing more and more people. And if we do that, then perhaps it, it will re result in something a little more like revelation than. Okay. than disaster. Thank you. Thank sure. you very much, Mr. Harvey. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you.